The story is about the weakest person in the world and his transformation after death into the strongest person in the world. It all began 10 years ago when unknown portals started opening up all over the world, leading to other worlds, and monsters began emerging from them into the human world. Also, there appeared people called hunters who awakened non-human abilities within themselves, and they fight against the monsters because people with their weapons are unable to defeat them. The monsters are incredibly strong, but there are also the strongest among humans who are at the highest rank of hunters, depending on their mana reserves they are ranked S A B C D E. Hunters, once awakened, cannot change their strength and rank. Our main character, as already known, will be the hunter of the lowest rank E, Sun Jin Wu. However, he had so little mana that he even lost to ordinary goblins. It all starts with everyone gathering for a raid led by Song Chi Yul, and also in this raid comes his longtime friend Kim, Son Pak, who has already quit hunting but due to circumstances because he is expecting a second child, he had to come to earn some money. And here comes our main character, who was nicknamed the weakest hunter of humanity, and as everyone says, if you see him in a raid, then the raid will not be difficult. There our main character meets his longtime friend Ju He, who is a healer and has a rank of B, who constantly worries about our main character and always tells him to be careful. Hunters went into portals in groups of eight people, so sometimes Jin Wu went on outings, purely for the sake of quantity. Just like now, they took Sun to a low-ranking dungeon where the comrades quickly defeated the boss and minions. But one of them finds a hidden passage, and Song Chi Yul claims that it is a double dungeon. Everyone is surprised, but not everyone wants to go there. Song Chi Yul gives everyone a choice, who wants to go and who doesn't. In the end, the last vote went to our son, and being in such a difficult situation in life, where his mother is sick, he decided and they went further. As a result, their path led to a huge hall, where they were surrounded by huge ancient statues with tools in their hands, and in the center, one huge statue, and there were no monsters at all. It seemed that further they found the commandments of the temple. After reading all the commandments, Juhi grabs our son's hand and tells him that the statue's eyes moved and he watches them. Well, then the doors to the room close, but there was one brave man who was against it but still went there. As soon as he approached the locked door to go back, the statue killed him. As it turned out, the statues were alive, and panic began among all who were there. The main character feels fear of the statues. As a result, the series ends with the fact that the central statue looked at our main character, but our hero, being the weakest, had a very good perception. Perhaps it saved him from death when he shouted for everyone to duck, after which the central statue emitted a beam from its eyes, and as a result, everyone who ducked survived. The main character doesn't understand what's going on and in desperation concludes that they will all be killed here. And this is not a D-ranked dungeon. It all begins with showing us the aftermath of what happened at the end of the first series, where the central statue burned everyone who stood before it, and those who survived must thank Sun, as survivor Song Chi Yul did. But then we see that he is not completely unharmed. He lost his arm. He wanted to ask Ju He to heal him, but she was in complete shock and couldn't do anything, as she was terrified. In the end, Sun helps him bandage the wound, and Song Chi Yul tells that he has been in B rank dungeons, and claims that this place is definitely not D rank, it might even be A rank or S rank. Then Song Chi Yul remembers the commandments written at the entrance. The first one is to bow down before their lord, the second one is to praise their lord, the third one is to believe in their lord, and anyone who breaks this will not leave here alive. And then Sun assumes that the lord Lord mentioned in the commandment is the central statue itself. Then another brave soul appears, who thinks that speed is everything, and the statue makes it clear to him that he is just nobody with his speed, burning him in an instant. The statue can kill them at any moment, but hasn't yet. Sun thinks that something is wrong here, so remembering Song Chi Yul's words about the commandments, he risks his life and tries to fulfill it, and it all goes well, and he tells everyone to bow to the statue, and it won't attack those who bow before it. Everyone was already relieved and relaxed, thinking that the statue is doing nothing, but then it stood up from its throne and walked towards the hunters. Sun remembers that the second commandment required praising their lord, but he doesn't know how to do it. And then a hunter appears who studied ethnology and knows a couple of prayers, but everything was fine until he started praising the wrong lord. As a result, he was crushed. Panic began. Everyone scattered in all directions. There were those who stood opposite the statue, and they were immediately cut down. Sun notices that not all statues have weapons. Some have musical instruments, and he immediately tells everyone to run to the statues with musical instruments in their hands, running to a statue with his friend Ju He. He realizes that there is one statue with a musical instrument per person. He again risks his life and starts running to another statue, but the central statue catches up to him and almost kills him. But he manages to reach the statue, and the central statue returns to its throne, and the ordeal is over. Ju He immediately runs to the maimed son to heal him, but then he notices that Sun has lost his leg. Next, in the center of the huge hall, an altar appears, 
which is often mentioned in myths, they are for sacrifices and offerings to the gods. As it was written in the last commandment to believe in their Lord, everyone immediately understood that they need to sacrifice someone, but they immediately accused Song Chi Yul of being guilty of them being here and ending up like this. But as soon as he approached the altar, fire ignited, and they didn't understand what else to do. In the end, they all approached the altar, and all the lights lit up, and the main doors that had closed reopened, and blue lights appeared around the altar. Immediately, everyone understood that the blue lights were the time given. After all lights went out, the gates closed, and the statues around started moving towards the altar. Their only salvation was to watch the statues walking towards them, and they would stop moving. But everything went to pieces when one girl couldn't take it anymore and simply ran away. As a result, it became difficult to keep an eye on all the statues. Then a man also ran after her, and it became even harder. Then Hunter Kim says that if they get stuck here forever, and that he has a family at home and he can't die, in the end, he runs away too. And they are left with three of them, Sun, Song Chi Yul, and Ju He. Song Chi Yul tells them to leave together, and he will stay behind, as he has nothing to lose anymore. In the end, he asks Ju He to help Sun and leave, but then she falls not understanding why, and her legs don't move. Song Chi Yul and Sun notice this and decide that Sun will stay and Song Chi Yo will carry Ju He and they will both get out of this place together while Sun stays. Everyone leaves and Sun naively thinks that he will at least take one of the statues with him to the afterlife. But the statues don't think so. In the end, he, in a state of death, gets angry at himself for being too kind to others and that he doesn't want to die and he also has a family waiting for him at home. And if he had another chance and then a notification window appears in front of him, a secret quest, Bravery of the Weak, appears. He meets the conditions to become a player and if he refuses, his heart will stop in 0.02 seconds. He accepts the quest and becomes a player. He became a player and woke up in the morning in the hospital, completely uninjured. His leg was intact, his arm was intact, and he thought it was a dream. Before he could understand what was happening, people from the Korean Hunter Association, who were observers, came to his ward. They immediately tell him that he is one of the survivors from the double dungeon, and he spent three days in a coma. They also told him that they found him at the entrance to the double dungeon, and found no statues or temple there. There was only sun, and nothing else. Sun was surprised himself because all this was true, and the hunters from the association told him that he had survived the second awakening. Such an event is very rare, but hunters awaken stronger. They checked him on a mana measurer, but were clearly shocked that he had less mana than even a bug, and in the end, they just left. But one question still interested them. How did Sun survive? As soon as they left, Sun wonders why they didn't see this window in front of him, and he realizes that only he sees this notification window. His sister Gina comes, who immediately scolds him for not valuing himself and for how she worried about him. He asks her if she sees the notification window, but she doesn't see it either. Gina suggests to him that to read the message, he needs to open the mailbox, and immediately a quest appears, the beginning of strength training. This system was created to help the player develop, in case of not completing the quest conditions, the player is penalized. Opening the daily strength training quest, he needs to do push-ups, squats, torso lifts, and running, but he ignores them, thinking that it's not for him right now, completely forgetting about the penalty for not completing the task. Enjoying his dreams at 12 and at night, a window appears above the main character stating that the daily quest was not completed. Suddenly he was transported to another dimension, into the desert, with a huge desert centipede above him, and a penalty quest began, the goal of which was to survive for four hours, or run away. Our main character deeply regretted not completing the quest, and after surviving, he never violated the quest conditions again. Starting from this night, he completed daily quests every day without rest. Most importantly, he realizes that all these windows are not glitches. For completing quests, he receives rewards in the form of full recovery, and fatigue immediately disappears, then skill points, and he chooses which parameters to invest them in, and our hero immediately invests everything in strength. Sun himself feels that he is becoming stronger with each new skill point. He notices that it's becoming just like in a game. Also, unexpectedly, as the last reward for the quest, he receives a box. Opening it, he gets a silver key from it, which is a pass Passage to the dungeon, where he can level up his skills, levels, and find new items. After leaving the hospital, our main character goes to his mother in the hospital, who is suffering from a rare disease called eternal sleep. After that, he promises to become stronger, and definitely cure her, and takes the silver key, and goes to its entrance. Using the key, he enters the dungeon, which seems to have not changed the real world, but only he sees this dungeon. As soon as he entered the dungeon, he realized that there are a lot of monsters here. Goblins come out in front of him, the same ones he couldn't handle alone, and here there are three of them at once, pulling himself together. Sun realizes that he has become much stronger, and easily defeats them, but after defeating the goblins, a stronger monster unexpectedly appears, Luke in the steel jaw. Unexpectedly, he froze in place, as his legs stopped obeying him, out of fear. 
Before him stood a new opponent, Lucan the Steel Jaw, much stronger than goblins. He leveled up and felt his body as light as a feather, reminding himself that he needed to stop being afraid, as he wouldn't become stronger that way. He punches Lucan with his bare fist and pushes him away, surprising himself with how strong he has become. However, bare fists won't defeat Lucan. Suddenly he remembers that he has a weapon. He opens his inventory and retrieves a sword that somehow ended up there. Kim's sword, which he bought for three million. He easily cuts Lucan and defeats him, but the joy doesn't last long as two more Lucans appear. Sun deals with them just as easily, but the sword is now useless. After defeating the two Lucans, he faces a choice, to continue or to return home from the dungeon. Sun decides to move forward, but it won't be easy anymore. By defeating all the Lucans on his way, he significantly raises his level and obtains items that he can sell in the future for real money. Sun realizes that he can see the names and health bars of the monsters, and if the name is written in white, it means the opponent is much weaker than him. But if it's written in red or yellow, it means Sun is not strong enough for them. Continuing on, he finds a descent where he encounters a creature much stronger than himself. Nevertheless, he decides to go down and confront it. As he descends, everything seems calm until a creature emerges from the water and pushes Son against the wall. It's the blue poisonous Casca, and her name is Orange, indicating that she is much stronger than our main character. With nowhere to run, the battle begins. He immediately realizes that he can't penetrate her armor with his weapon, and he receives a direct blow. But he doesn't die immediately, thanks to all the leveling up. Casca mercilessly throws Sun around, not giving him a chance to win. Realizing that he cannot defeat Casca, he finds the strength within himself to become stronger and never give up again. He realizes that he is ashamed of never trying to become stronger before, always giving up after being ridiculed by others. Gathering all his strength, he decides to do whatever it takes to break through Casca's armor. Understanding that he cannot break through, he decides on the only possible way to win, to strangle Casca with his strength gained during his training. After some time, Casca couldn't throw. Soon off her neck, and eventually San squeezes her with all his strength, causing her to die, falling down together with the killed Casca. Sun says that he became a bit stronger. After defeating Casca, he receives a blade made from the snake's fang, which applies paralysis and health absorption effects. He also receives a potion of the poisonous Casca, which provides resistance to physical attacks, but decreases the player's strength. Sun reacts that he doesn't even want to use it because it looks scary. After the dungeon disappears, he finds himself in the real subway. There were neither people nor cars as if everyone had disappeared. A soldier approaches him and says that people are not allowed here. Sun tells him that he is a hunter, and the soldier immediately apologizes, explaining that gates have opened nearby, and hunters are fighting a boss there. Because of this, everyone in this area has been evacuated. Sun, with his senses, can already feel the monster's mana, and know where it is. Approaching, he sees that they are in trouble, and damagers cannot deal damage to this monster at all. Sun takes matters into his own hands, and throws his sword at the D-rank boss, destroying it with one blow. The hunter who was fighting him was surprised that the throw was so powerful, comparable to the throw of an S-rank hunter. In the end, we are shown how muscular and strong Sun has become. And the episode begins, just as you love it, with your favorite main character acquiring a harem. Oops, what am I talking about? The entire hospital starts discussing Sun, how his body has changed, and how handsome he has become, noting his newfound muscles despite being E-rank. One nurse didn't believe the rumors, but she ended up going to tell Sun that he was being discharged today and needed to come to the front desk, feeling so embarrassed that she even took Sun's number, thinking he wanted to receive the results of his tests. The next day, Gina wakes up Sun and notices that his body has indeed changed, with him starting to work out. He really has changed, judging by the previous episodes. Sitting on the couch, he looks for ways to earn money as a hunter, and suddenly he notices people gathering for a raid. He arrives at the meeting point, where he is greeted by Juan Don Seo, who tells him about the raid they are about to embark on. All Sun has to do is carry their backpacks and belongings, and they will pay him, or so he thought at least. A new character appears, Tony Stark's son, Jin Ho Ye. Okay, just kidding. Sun immediately notices that his equipment is very expensive. As soon as they enter the dungeon, Sun notices that no one is there. After proceeding further, they find themselves in a trap, starting to panic as if they were in an anthill. Suddenly, Sun points out to everyone that they are coming from above. Immediately, everyone reacts and easily deals with the monsters, showing that these hunters have been working together for a long time. Later, one of the hunters notices that the wounds on the dead monsters don't look like those left by humans or hunters, to which Juan indicates that there is stronger prey ahead, namely, the boss. As they move forward, Sun begins to wonder why everything is so easy and simple, and 
whether these hunters want to betray them. On their way, they encounter many semi-dead monsters. Proceeding further, they find the boss's lair, where there are many mana stones, but the boss turns out to be asleep at this time. After that, Juan tells his people to get the tools and start mining mana stones, to which one replies that he forgot them outside and they need to go back for them. Immediately, Juan tells San and Jin Ho Yi to stay here with the boss and guard the mana stones while they go for the tools and return. San is surprised and stays while they leave, and after they leave, the entrance to the boss is exploded by the magic of one of Juan's hunters, and the path to the boss is blocked. From the noise, the boss wakes up, and Juan says that the two of them will never defeat this boss, and they will die there, and all this was done so that they wouldn't share their loot with them. In the end, Jin Ho Yi says that he will defeat this boss alone through his fear, but San throws off his bag from his shoulder and says that he will defeat him himself. The episode begins with the hunters emerging from the dungeon, and one of them suggests they should have just killed them on the spot. Juan calls him an idiot, pointing out that if the spider had woken up, how would they have taken the mana stones? They hope the spider will kill the remaining two, and they will return later when the spider falls asleep again, through the upper passage above the boss, to take all the mana stones and leave. Juan asks one of the hunters if he could have defeated the spider alone, to which he replies that he couldn't, and Juan admits that he couldn't either. Jinho stops Sun, saying that the spider is not within his capabilities. However, San claims that the Kasaka and Golem he previously defeated were much weaker than this spider, but he doesn't feel fear towards it and goes into battle. Sun becomes very fast and strong, and Jinho notices this, calling him bro, but also suspecting that Sun has falsified his rank, as an E-rank hunter couldn't move like that. Sun desperately tries to damage the spider, but unsuccessfully due to its strong chitinous armor. Eventually, using his new dagger and a leap skill, Sun strikes the spider, but it's not enough. The spider spits acid, but Sun, using a bonus from the daily quest, survives and retaliates, defeating the spider and gaining levels and loot. Stay tuned for more anime recap content.